Super Bowl, the single greatest sporting event in the world. To earn the right to participate just once is a glorious achievement. Last season, the Washington Redskins became the first team since the 79 Steelers to play in two consecutive NFL championship games. Such an accomplishment truly indicates an uncommon level of superiority. Throughout the regular season and the playoffs, the Redskins had trampled everything in their path. But on this Super Bowl Sunday, Washington's march through the NFL came to a halt. The Los Angeles Raiders victimized the Redskins, just as the Redskins had victimized the rest of the National Football League. A disheartening 38-9 loss ended one of the finest seasons in league history, a season in which the Redskins performed extraordinary feats that ordinary teams can only dream of. The 1983 season saw Washington march to the tunes of glory. Every team wanted to defeat them. But the Redskins survived the NFL gauntlet. They finished with a 14 and 2 record, pro football's best, and scored the most points in NFL history. While the rest of the National Football League was striving for parity, this team proved once again that they are a cut above. When the 1983 season began, the defending world champion Redskins' reign was tested early. For Washington's opener was against the Cowboys. We've got to see if we can get back to the same emotional level that we had last year in the playoffs and our fans and everybody there in our stadium and see if we can get ready uh, for this one. It is going to be a big game, but it's going to be one of 16, and it's not going to be any more important than coming back and winning the next week. But. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to be uh, an exciting way to start the year on Monday Night TV. Anxious to legitimize their Super Bowl season, the Redskins came out swinging. The defense held the Cowboys to just three first half points, while the offense scored 23. Just as it seemed the Redskins had proved they were king of the hill, the Cowboys sent them tumbling down. Dallas's 28 second half points beat Washington 31 to 30. Oh no, no! The fear of complacency suddenly hovered over the Super Bowl champion. This was a team with something special. They were a group of characters with character, and their unique chemistry created a bond that was almost magical. Dallas proved to be only a temporary detour as Washington quickly got back into the fast lane with consecutive wins over the Eagles, Chiefs and Seahawks. With a three and one record after four weeks, the Redskins engines were revved up when they roared back into RFK Stadium to meet the Raiders. Three first quarter interceptions by the secondary. And a Joe Theismann touchdown pass to Joe Washington 
gave the Redskins a 17-7 first half lead. But it was the Raiders who went on the warpath in the second half. Four Los Angeles touchdowns backed Washington into a corner. But in the final period, Theismann and the Redskins began clawing their way out. Charlie Brown's touchdown brought Washington within eight. But needing two scores to win, the Redskins had to have the ball back. Okay, we're gonna hit it deep left. Now, if they have their onside receiving team in there, then he's gonna hit a low liner, still deep, but one that bounces, and if we get lucky down there, we may be able to fall on it. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go. to a field goal, leaving Washington only a touchdown away from victory. Best better hurry up out of that huddle. Here we go, five percent grab to the far side. Come on, fans, let's go, let's have it! Theismann rolls out, looks, fires it up the middle, Charlie Brown, he's got it at the six, and pull down. Hurry up offense, here come the Redskins to the line of scrimmage, the six-yard line. They've got to have a touchdown. They trail by five from the six-yard line. Theismann with a straight drop. Looking, looking into the end zone. Throws it over the middle. Washington, touchdown! Joe Washington! In one of the most exciting games of the season, Washington had scored three times in the final six minutes to earn a 37-35 victory. The special team's key role in the win over Los Angeles was a testament to the Redskins' overall team strength. Special team captains Otis Wansley and Peter Cronin and punt returner Mike Nelms excelled on a unit that thrived on second effort, reckless daring, and so much more. There are a lot of little things that happen out there that are undetected by the average fan, usually there's a scheme that each team has, and it's not just hit the closest guy. Ten-man middle switch, but be ready for Spy if they get some. Spy, Spy, ten-man Spy! Pooch alert. Hey, Pooch, Pooch alert. The strategy sounds foreign, but it's easily translated. This is gonna be the throwback to Daryl. The special teams were not the only Redskins unit to thrive on dirty work. With their noses to the dirt, Jacoby, Grimm, Bostic, May, and Stark comprised the NFL's best offensive line and gave Theismann ample time to pass and fullback John Riggins plenty of room to run. Riggins has been named an honorary groundhog, but number 44 is more akin to a bull, and in 1983, the NFL was his personal China shop. Riggins' straightforward, no-nonsense running style is also a reflection of his unique personality. I've never been a, what do you call him, raw, raw type of guy and a cheerleader type of fellow. For me, it's business. I, I have a job to do, and I go out and do it the best I can. And when, uh, when I'm not on the football field, I'm over on the bench. Almost 90% of the time down by the oxygen tanks. In his 12th season, the diesel still provided a breath of fresh air for the Redskin offense. 
the NFL's fifth all-time leading rusher, scored a record 24 touchdowns in 83, but the big fullback does not want to be remembered for his statistics. Actually, if they were going to remember him by anything, I would like them to think that I always came to play on Sunday. I might do some goofy things during the week, but when Sunday rolls around and breath blows a whistle, you can bet that I'll be playing. John Riggins epitomized the dominating power of the Redskins, for he, too, was a cut above. Sporting a 6-2 record at the season's halfway mark, the Redskins found the waters on the West Coast a little rough as they cast off in a game against San Diego. Joe Theismann roughed the boat early with the touchdown pass to wide receiver Virgil C. while punter Jeff Hayes hoisted anchor and set sail for the Charger end zone. Hayes' voyage set up the first of two Riggins touchdowns. Unfortunately for Washington, the Chargers kept the game close. But with less than two minutes left, Theismann was squarely at the helm when the Redskins began their drive for the winning score. Theismann completed five of seven passes to move Washington into field goal range with only seconds to go. From 37 yards out, Theismann set, snap, hold, kick is up, long enough. Is it good? Yeah. It is good. It's good. That will do it right there. While some quarterbacks simply endure pressure, Joe Theismann consistently rises above it. One minute left in the game, and it's third and ten, and everybody knows it's past, and the defensive ends turn into werewolves. You either rise to that and can handle that, or you can't, and you should be in another business. Some quarterbacks can't handle that kind of pressure. Joe can, which is what makes him probably the best right now. Theismann's flair for the dramatic has earned him the nickname Hollywood. And number seven is one star who doesn't require a stand-in. Joe's tough hide and strong arm led the Redskins to an NFL record 541 points. While backs Nick Giaquinto and Joe Washington and receivers Don Warren, Rick Walker, Alvin Garrett, Art Monk, and Charlie Brown all relished Theismann's arm. The Hogs appreciated his other physical skills. Well, in the old days, when you had a quarterback like, say, Sonny Jurgensen, who would just drop back five yards, you know he wasn't going anywhere. The defense could key on that area of the field and attack it. When you have a mobile quarterback like Joe, and with mobile pocket concepts, it takes the pressure off you from that standpoint, and it puts the pressure on defense because they don't know where you're going to go. So they have to cover the whole field just on the odd chance that you might roll out. But there's another dimension to the game, but also just more exciting, the game is more fun. And the idea of this business is to have some fun. The Redskins had fun in 1983. They were a loose team, unified by contrasting identities. And nowhere was this more evident than on defense. Darrell Green, number 28, and Mark Murphy, number 29, were an odd couple who found success in the Redskins secondary. Green was a number one draft pick whose blinding speed helped him cover the entire field and earn a spot on the all-rookie team. While Green's quickness got him where he wanted to go, Murphy's seven years of experience already had him there. A pro bowler, Murphy led the NFL with nine interceptions. Constantly under bombardment, Washington secondary nicknamed itself the Pearl Harbor Crew. However, Murphy and Green, with the help of Anthony Washington, Ken Coffey, Vernon Dean, Curtis Jordan, Greg Williams, and Brian Coppender, braved the attack and intercepted a league-high 34 passes. Dave Butts and Dexter Manley had such contrasting styles that they made TV's odd couple, Felix and Oscar, seem like identical twins. Dexter is flamboyant and outspoken. Tough times never last, but tough people do. That's one of my favorite books that I'm always reading. 
Dave is quiet and composed. I'm a little bit uh, older, a little bit more uh, reserved. It's hard to find anything that uh, we both think and do the same way. The only thing that we do is play on the same team. They are like oil and water, but defensively, they blend together to wreak havoc upon opposing offenses. Their pressure was so intense that if one didn't get his man, the other one would. Dexter and Dave combined for over 24 sacks. And when they didn't get the passer, number 78, Tony McGee, did. Defensive pressure created opportunities that helped spur the Redskins' late season push to the playoffs. Linebackers number 55, Mel Kaufman, Rich Malott, and number 52, Neil Okowitz, came up with big plays and wins over Atlanta and St. Louis. The stretch drive was also where Riggins was at his best. Rushing for seven touchdowns against the Giants, Eagles, and Rams, Riggo helped boost the Redskins' record to 12-2 and, and set up a crucial Week 15 contest against the Cowboys. It was sundown in Texas Stadium, and there was room for only one team at the top of the NFC East. Washington patiently waited for the Cowboys to make the first move. And when they did, the Redskin defense cut down Dallas where they stood. Washington's league-leading rushing defense limited Dallas to only 33 yards. Doomsday had arrived, all right, for the Cowboys. The convincing 31 to 10 win propelled the Redskins into first place and into the playoffs. For visiting playoff teams, RFK Stadium has become a burial ground. And in last season's opening round, it was a resurrected Ram team that was promptly put to rest. Derek Gabo fires it out on the far side to Dickerson. Picked off. He's gone. It's 28 there. Bye bye. Race into the end zone. Everybody else was running full speed and there was just trotting. He missed. Really Derek Gabo was giving chase. That was really funny. That's not if you're Derek Gabo. That's not so funny. Washington was so overwhelmed that not even a presidential pardon could have saved the Rams on this day. Back to Steisman, fires it near side, bump right open at the 10, bye-bye, touchdown, Washington Redskins. The Redskins crushed Los Angeles 51 to 7, but still there were those unimpressed with Washington's show of strength. I just don't believe that we will be in awe or, or uh, terribly nervous about this. I think our players are eagerly looking forward to just finding out how good the Redskins are. Washington quickly showed the 49ers just how good they were. Riggins ran for his sixth straight 100-yard game in postseason play and scored two touchdowns. Washington's power you won play, razzle dazzled you the next offense, had 49 ahead Spenny. The defense became so unnerved, a simple play fake to number 44 gave Theismann all day in the pocket. A 
A 70-yard Theismann to Charlie Brown touchdown gave Washington a 21 to nothing lead, and the Redskins appeared unbeatable. However, in the second half, the Redskins let their guard down, allowing the 49ers to sneak in some crucial blows. With three final quarter scores, the 49ers had unpacked a game the Redskins seemingly had in the bag. But true to the character of this Redskin team, they stubbornly set out to obtain a victory they had already laid claim to. Washington's final drive wasn't pretty, but it got them where they needed to go. Redskins won their second consecutive NFC championship with a heart-pounding flair that typified their wondrous season. The pressure of a Super Bowl title had not unraveled this team as it had others before them. For the Redskins clung together in 1983 and not only survived a difficult challenge, they conquered. By maintaining their lofty status at the summit of pro football, the 1983 Washington Redskins were truly a cut above.